Kitsap County has proposed a new set of rules for enforcing land use regulations. The rules, collectively known as Title V, would move code enforcement from the area of civil law to that of administrative law. The proposal has drawn criticism from many in the community who argue there's no clear need for this change and it will violate basic rights of property owners. Preliminary drafts of the proposal have led many to fear the new system will allow county staff to impose large fines without reasonable due process, will remove the right of property owners to contest county decisions in district court, may allow county staff to access private property without the owner's consent and without a warrant, and will eliminate reasonable provisions for grandfathering of properties built under previous versions of county code. On October 2nd, the Kitsap Alliance of Property Owners, along with representatives from county realtors, the Tea Party, and others, organized a two-hour town hall meeting to discuss these issues. This video presents brief clips of some of the things that were said. The panel was composed of the moderator, Jeff Rhodes from the Evergreen Freedom Foundation, Dana Soyat, our Kitsap Realtor, Johnny Walker, President of the Kitsap Tea Party, Alan Beam, a Realtor and member of the Board of the Kitsap Alliance of Property Owners, Jack Hamilton, past chair of the Kitsap Republicans, and Bill Palmer, president of the Kitsap Alliance of Property Owners. After an introduction in which Bill Palmer explained the history of Title V, the panel addressed a basic question. How does code enforcement work today, and why do we need to change it? Jack Hamilton and Johnny Walker discussed comments the head of Kitsap Community Development had made in discussing Title V. He told Bill that uh, going through this constitutional process uh, handling uh, a code violation, which was really a lengthy and, and arduous process and it cost a lot of money and there had to be a better way. You know, where I come from, gee, I'd like to kind of stick with the Constitution if that's perfectly okay with him. He, uh, he noted that the district court judges uh, were not trained, were not educated, and really didn't have the background to handle uh, land use matters. Well, I'm sure that the district court judges would be more than pleased to know that they're not capable of doing their job because of Eric Keaton said so. Um, I, I think he made it pretty clear that the whole reason for this was to make this process more um, amenable to the county and a little bit less amenable uh, to the property owners. And, and and keep in mind, when you listen to those answers and then you consider that the primary responsibility of any elected official and therefore their appointees is to maintain and protect individual rights, I think there's a significant disconnect there. I want to build on what Jack said in a moment ago about the constitutional issues. Because in that same series of emails, there was an assertion uh, by the county department head that uh, he didn't think these were constitutional issues. Essentially, the, the seizing uh, for a regulation of property, the uh, elimination of the grandfather clause, the warrantless inspections of your property, home, and business. He didn't see these as constitutional issues and asked me on a separate email. I was, I was quite surprised that asked me what constitution was I referring to. And, and so, you know, because his reading of the federal constitution didn't, you know, didn't mention this as, as I had indicated, so I, I had to point to him the state article uh, in the constitution that charged him with protection of uh, individual rights. Several people were concerned about the fact that the new regulations appear to allow county staff to act without regard for due process. There is a state law right now that says what a county code enforcement inspector can and cannot do and how he has to go to the property. The, the RCW is called the Landlord's right, uh, Landlord Tenant Law. It's RCW 59.18.150. And there, it requires two things to get a code enforcement officer onto a piece of property. It's, they have to go to a judge. They have to say, there is a violation of code here. Part one. Part two is imminent danger to the to person or property. They have to satisfy both of those before they can get a warrant to come onto the property. State law. That's not in here. 
Ms. John? One other thing that's, that's sort of interesting along the, the inspector coming on your property, most of the complaints that DCD is acting on are third-party complaints. Neighbor A is ratting out on neighbor B. Doesn't like him, makes too much noise, whatever. Well, there is no need to validate what that complaint says or the basis of that complaint. The complaint is kept absolutely in, invisible throughout this process and there is no recourse. But consider, if I told a, uh, the, the code enforcement officer that there was something wrong on your property, what authority does he have to go on that property? He has no personal knowledge. He does not have the, the uh, witness account of somebody who has been there. And if you're smart, you're sure as hell not going to let him come through the house. So consider how this whole thing starts. It starts because I walk up to your door, and before you can tell me, get the hell off my property, I tell you that you're in violation and you're subject to $500 or $1,000 a day fine. And oh, by the way, here's the complaint. Alan Beam discussed the issue of grandfathering. Right now, if you build a house, and you build it to today's standard, you're free to live in that house. If you, uh, example, um, before 1975, there were no building codes in this county. So if you built your house before 1975, the code compliance officer comes in and says, the railings are four inches too far. Whatever he wants to say, you're in violation. In 1994, they um, changed the energy codes, and they took the required energy uh, insulation capability from R9 to R22. Minor problem, R22 insulation doesn't fit in a 4 by 4 in a 2 by 4 construction code. So the county went to 2 by 6 co codes. If the county code inspector comes in and says, you don't have the right insulation in your house, $1,000 a day. There's no concept in the, the new document about grandfathering. What we have is good. This issue concerns several members of the audience. I just want to put in my two cents as a relatively new homeowner in Kitsap County. I was born and raised here. But uh, if I had known that this was even on the table, I probably would not have purchased in Kitsap County. Um, I bought a house that was built in 1984, and we're talking about all these codes. As soon as I learned about this, I went and did some research and in order to fix my house, which is a duplex, I'm also a land. So, in order to fix everything and get everything up to current codes, which I was under the impression that I was good because I was grandfathered in when I bought the property, um, it would probably cost me close to half a million dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. People discussed the idea that the new regulations would depress sale of property. If I'm a realtor, I could be possibly drug into a lawsuit um, selling a house that is not in code compliance. Alan Beam enlarged on this point, reading from a draft of Title V. The fact that a person aided, abetted, counseled, encouraged, hired, comm commanded, induced, or procured or could not or did not entertain a criminal intent shall not be a defense to any person aiding, abetting, counseling, encouraging, hiring, commanding, or inducing another person. Uh, you're all guilty of something. Everybody raise your hand. At the end of the meeting, Bill Palmer talked about what citizens can do if they oppose this proposal. If the first thing you do is to talk to your neighbors, that's the step you should take immediately be a phone call, could be an email, could be a letter. The second thing you do, and we will try to, as Kitsap Alliance property owners, to uh, keep you informed as to what's going on to the best of our ability, and to let you know how to take action. If the day comes that a public hearing is scheduled, whether it's first before the Planning Commission and ultimately before the Board of County Commissioners, the uh, experience that this organization and the realtors have had in the past is that if large numbers
turn out in opposition in large numbers, what's that? That's 500 or more people turn out in opposition to something the Board of County Commissioners have in the past demonstrated that they will think twice before taking action on an ordinance.